Hello everyone and welcome to the series about data mining. This is part one and it's about web scraping. Uh, web scraping is one of the most common methods of collecting data. Uh, although um, most people consider it a last resort, um, it's still one of the um, uh, most commonly um, uh, used methods of um, uh, data mining actually. Uh, I will be using uh, LXML uh, library. This is the link to it, uh, where you can um, find more um, information about this library. I'll be uh, importing um, this library, pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. Uh, uh, finally, I'm configuring pandas uh, for a maximum of 50 columns. The um, data and data source uh, that we'll be working with, I will be um, working with the uh, Nobel uh, Prize um, de uh, data. I'll be getting this data from Wikipedia. This is the page that we'll be working with. Um, that's the page. And this is the table that we want to uh, scrape and um, get information from. So um, before you um, use web scraping, read the terms of um, service of that website. Some websites don't allow any um, web scraping. Some allow moderate use only. For Wikipedia, I've looked up their um, terms of services. And um, generally, they don't allow automated use. Uh, if it's abusive or destructive of their service. So um, I would argue web scraping a single page wouldn't be a problem. A, dis a very clear disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. But uh, some basic rules of uh, web scraping, check if there is an API and use it. It will make your life easier. Don't use we um, web scraping too much in a short time. So don't uh, make a lot of uh, requests to a single server in a very short time. It will slow down that server and it might get you banned from the website. Um, never uh, scrape anything that is uh, not public. So if you uh, reached a document that's um, not supposed to be public, you're, you're not supposed to um, get any data from there. I think that's clear. But uh, lastly, check um, robots.txt. Um, usually it, um, it guides you to how to um, use um, their website in an automated fashion. Um, so well, let's start by fetching uh, our um, HTML uh, page and building, um, and building the HTML tree. Uh, and here I'm defining a function that just previews um, a, an HTML uh, element. So I fetched my uh, URL um, and I uh, converted that into an HTML tree. And um, this is my first element, which is the main HTML tag of the page. Uh, these are the uh, attributes of that tag. And it sh in here, it just shows the first 200 uh, letters from um, the page. Uh, the first thing we want to do is locate that table. So uh, if you will uh, go down in here, you will see this table uh, that we want to uh, scrape. Um, if you're using Firefox, uh, right click on it and inspect element and you will um, be able to uh, interactively um, check your code and you can go back to your table tag and we can see that there is no ID so it's not easy to identify the table but it has class um, wiki table sortable and jQuery table sorter um, so that is what we know about this table um, so let's start by getting all the tables in that uh, page um, to get uh, tables, I'm referring to, I'm using uh, XPath uh, function uh, and uh, requesting all tables. Um, the two forward slashes means uh, look everywhere in the document. So not only children, 
or so if you're anywhere in the document this will look even in parent um, nodes and uh, child nodes so uh, I'm fine that I'm printing all the tables that I found so I have uh, one two three four five six tables uh, yes uh, sorry uh, three yeah two uh, five uh, tables this is a long table actually uh, I have uh, five tables in here um, I can see that the first one is the table that I want obviously the others are just uh, styling or something like this so uh, we can um, get the first table in this uh, list but um, let's see how can we locate it using um, a class imagine if we have uh, if we had um, more tables with the similar um, um, multiple tables with the same um, uh, classes uh, this is an easy way to uh, get uh, one of them or all of them uh, so in here I'm selecting table again and I'm selecting um, attribute class equals week table and sortable uh, which is what's written here uh, there is an important um, thing to notice uh, this table has um, two classes and this table had three classes and this table had three classes jQuery t uh, table sorter um, this last if you selected this and searched for it you wouldn't find it in the code because this last table is um, um, added um, on the client side using uh, JavaScript so uh, web scraping doesn't um, execute any uh, JavaScript within the code it receives so it will not add that extra CSS class so ha this is one thing you have to watch out for if you want to disable um, uh, JavaScript to see the page as your web scraper will see it if you're using Firefox go to about colon config scroll down to um, script uh, JavaScript that uh, enabled and toggle it if you toggle that and go back to your uh, page and refresh you will see that you lost a lot of um, JavaScript things but if you inspect your code now you will find only the two classes uh, that were enabled um, uh, that existed in the code that we get from web scraping so let's um, toggle that back and let's close this um, so that's um, that's an important note about um, uh, classes or sometimes they will be added on client side so you will have to check the code some uh, the page sometimes without uh, JavaScript enabled uh, so let's um, uh, get that and uh, in here I'm uh, referring to the first one even if you have only one result uh, coming back from XPath it will always return it as a list so in here I just want the first item which is this table first I'll uh, start by extracting uh, years so um, in here I'm um, looking for XPath TR which is uh, which are the rows um, and um, then I'm uh, getting the text content of these uh, rows so I'm extracting all the subjects um, of the first row uh, except for the first um, column uh, if you will uh, look in here this is the first row that we want to um, uh, scrape now we don't want the first column we just want physics chemistry and the rest of them so uh, in here I'm uh, I'm skipping the first one and going through the first row um, if I execute that I get all the subjects in here I'm replacing uh, n with space because I have um, I have a line breaker between those um, uh, two words so I had to um, replace that line breaker with a space so it looks like this um, then I will get uh, all the uh, years 
I'm using um, XPath TR. I'm skipping the first and last rows, and I'm uh, getting um, all the um, um, other rows. Basically, I'm uh, getting the first column of uh, all rows except the first one and the last one. And this is why I want to get the first column of all rows except the first one, the one with the title. And in this special table, if you look down, you'll find the last column also has the same titles. So you'll have to skip the first and last one. Um, I will execute that now. Um, I will be ext uh, extracting uh, winner's data. Um, so I'm going um, over the same uh, table with the XPath and TR, that's for rows. And I'm just looking at the first row. So with the first year, they distributed um, prizes. So I'm looking at this row now. Um, so uh, I will, I'm extracting the um, subject. Uh, sorry, I'm getting the uh, subject so I know which um, column I'm uh, in. Uh, then um, uh, w in each cell, I'm extracting a class in here. So let me uh, just show you how does that look. I will in inspect one of the winners. And you can see inside that row, uh, starting from the second column, we have a um, a uh, span called V card uh, with a class V card. Then there is another span inside it. Then there is a um, a link uh, inside that. So uh, what we're reading, we're reading the title as the name of the winner, and the um, the link to uh, his page. So we can maybe extract more information about him later. So uh, this is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm uh, getting um, span v, c um, v card as a class, then span, then A. Uh, and I'm extracting the attribute title and the attribute uh, href, which is the link. Let me execute that. And this is only for the first year. This is just to um, um, demonstrated so I'm printing everything in physics and chemistry and it can shows me that um, who uh, get prizes in each uh, different subject that year so I will uh, be doing that over the complete table uh, and here I'm uh, enumerating over years and the, uh, the inside um, table is uh, the inside loop is exactly the same as this one so let me do that um, and uh, for um, post processing we'll be using pandas I will be um, I'm defining a um, data frame in here I'm passing uh, the winners uh, names and calling the um, column winner name then I'm uh, adding the subject they get the uh, prize in the year uh, then I'm converting the year into an integer because it's a um, string because it came from an HTML page that's a string then I'm um, um, adding a column for the URL finally I'm showing just the top five records in here so I can see the winner name subject year and a relative URL to his page on Wikipedia Looking at the um, data, uh, so uh, in here I'm using uh, values, uh, value counts to um, um, get how many prizes, um, uh, how many people get prizes in different years. So I have another uh, series in here now with years and how many prizes were distributed every year or given every year. Uh, or how many people actually won prizes that year. Um, the number of prizes uh, per year, I'm just uh, plotting the number of uh, prizes per year. Um, so um, we can see it went a little down and then 
it went up after that. Um, overall, they have given 853 prizes. Um, and here uh, we can see that um, only few years they gave one or two prizes. Most of the years are in here uh, between five and uh, seven. And we can see there is uh, like a shift in here. So um, this is how many prizes they gave um, over uh, the years now. Uh, I will be analyzing that um, by subject. So um, in here I'm using um, um, cumulative uh, sum for the values. So for each subject, I'm plotting a line with cumulative sum. So um, this is the amount of prizes given for um, uh, a physiology or a medicine since the prize started. And this is the case for all other lines in here. We can see they all started kind of together. Then there is a little uh, diversion in here where peace prizes are less given. Uh, literature is almost linear. Um, chemistry is trailing behind physics and on the top um, physiology or medicine. You can see there is a little shift in here actually also. Uh, I think it, uh, 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 physics um, prizes were giving more than anything else. And there is a little switch around 1945. Um, uh, checking the effect of World War One and World War Two, I'm um, plotting the same chart, but I'm plotting everything only before 1950. Um, and I'm uh, adding two uh, rectangles in here to cover the area of uh, World War One and Two, and I'm annotating um, this text in here, WWI and WWII uh, for World War Two. Um, so we can see that they were all going the same. Peace, no peace prizes during the war. Going up again, no peace prizes during the Second World War. Um, we can see a spike in um, physiology or medicine by almost the second half of the war. So um, that's um, the tutorial. Uh, this is uh, available um, open source on uh, GitHub and it's uh, viewable on MB Viewer. The link to this is in the description below. Uh, I hope if you like this, you will subscribe to this channel and you can watch uh, another series about uh, IPython uh, notebooks. Um, this is uh, the first part of it or you can watch the next part of this series and it will be about uh, YouTube.API. Thank you.